This is the drill press. Now the drill press is really a pretty simple machine. You use it for drilling holes as you might suspect. Let's talk about the mechanics of the drill press first and then we'll show you a little bit of what it can do. At the back here you've got a motor that is suspended from the back of the assembly and that's attached to a series of pulleys and the pulleys of course are connected by belts and by changing the arrangement of the belts on the pulleys you can change the speed of your drill bit. This one has a, as most do, has a very nice handy chart inside to show you which arrangement of belts and pulleys gives you what speed. And this one goes from about 340 RPM up to 2800 RPM. Down here is the chuck. This should look familiar if you've ever seen a handheld drill. This is the part that holds the actual bit and like some of the handheld drills, this one opens with a key. Insert the drill bit, snug it up and it's ready to go. Some models also offer keyless chucks where you can just tighten them with a twist of your hands. This assembly raises and lowers the drill bit, raises and lowers what's at this whole assembly is called the quill. So you've got that travel so you can drive the bit straight down into your work. And then on the left side here there's a column and this one has a screw type stop on it. You dial these down to the specific depth and now when you Go, your travel is limited, so you can drill a hole of a limited depth. That's called a counter bore. So if you don't want to drill all the way through a piece, this stops the bit before it gets through. This particular model is a floor type drill press, a floor standing drill press. That's pretty obvious where that name comes from. It sits on the floor. The other type that uh, is available is a bench top drill press. It would typically have a foot at about this level, and you would set that on top of a, a bench for work. A bench top drill press might be the best place for you to get into a drill press if you're doing woodworking. Um, the floor standing model offers a whole lot more capacity to get the table down so you can get a larger work piece between the table and the bit. But for most of the jobs you're going to do in woodworking, a bench top drill press will cover you and they're a little less expensive. On most drill presses you'll see a geared assembly like this, a handle, a spin the handle and you can set the table at whatever height you want and then tighten the handle to lock it in place. Tables will also pivot so you can just move it out of the way if needed and you can tilt it. Raise this back up to where I can get to it. By loosening a bolt down here You can then pivot the table, and there's a gauge here to show you how much your tilt is. And there's one final control down here, pinches the table in place so you can rotate it if that's needed. Now the table does an awful lot, but uh, frankly this is one of the shortcomings of the drill press because this works fine for metal working, which is where the drill press originated. But if you want to improve your drill press for woodworking, one of the best things you can do is add a table. This is one that was featured in Wood Magazine. The drill press table offers several advantages. Number one, you've got this much larger work surface so that you can more easily support larger work pieces like you would have in, when you're building a cabinet or something. I think one of the best features is that you have the opportunity for this to add this fence here that you can clamp in position and move work pieces along. Now you can drill holes that are consistently spaced from the edge of a work piece. You can drill here and here and here. Also gives you a better margin of safety. As you're working, if the bit should catch in a piece, it's not going to spin because it's pressed up against the fence. This one also offers extendable wings. You can clamp stop blocks here so you can move a piece out and always drill holes in the same place, in the same place on multiple work pieces. When you're using a drill press, really very simple. I've got this piece that I'm going to say this is the side of a cabinet. I've got shelf pins measured out specific distance. I'm going to position these under the drill press. My first mark. Oops. That looks like a bit of a problem my handle is hitting my fence. But that's really not because these handles are designed to unscrew for that very reason. Just set that one aside and now I have my travel that I need. So I'm on my first mark, 
position the fence and lock it down. Now I can start drilling holes. Since I don't want these holes to go all the way through, I'm going to use my stop over here to make them just a quarter of an inch deep. I'll just show you how deep that's going to go. That's how deep the drill bit will be when it hits the stop. So all my holes will be of consistent depth. So you can see how I can keep moving down the line and drilling holes. Let's say I did want to drill through holes here. I'll just take my stop up so it's out of play. I don't want to drill through and drill into my table, so take a piece of scrap, put it underneath there. Now when I drill through, I'm drilling into the scrap and not my table. The other thing that backer board does for you is it gives you a nice clean back on, on your holes. Let me show you another neat trick that your drill press can do. This is a drum sander. You can take this and put it in place of a drill bit and turn your drill press into a drum sander for sanding curves. If I've got a project where I have a cutout like this, you can see where my pencil line is. I've rough cut that on the scroll saw. And then I need to sand up to this line. Well, doing that by hand would be very tedious and probably not really exact. With a drum sander in the drill press, turn this on. and I'm getting very close to my layout lines there. I like to be able to freehand this so I can use the full surface of the sanding drum like this, but once I get close to the edge, I want to make sure my edge here is 90 degrees to this face. So to accomplish that, I'm going to clamp a scrap just in front of the sanding drum here. Slip my workpiece in. and raise the table so it just catches the drum. Now, I can finish up resting this on the piece here, and I'll end up with a surface that is 90 degrees to the face. I only want to do this for the end, but again, the one drawback is I'm using just a portion of the sanding drum here, but this will give me a nice square surface. One of the strengths of the drill press is you can use bits you wouldn't want to use in a handheld drill. This is a wing cutter. It spins around here and cuts perfect circles, and you can cut rather sizable circles by adjusting this arm in and out. In a case like this, I've got a piece that I can't use the fence. The piece extends too far back, so I can't use the fence to brace it against. I want to make sure this piece stays put, and with this thing spinning around, I really don't want my hands anywhere near this, so I need to clamp the piece in place. I've got a backer board between my table and the workpiece so when the bit pokes through it won't tear up my drill press table. Clamp the workpiece in place. Make sure the table's locked in place and we're ready to go. A wing cutter should run at very slow speeds. So 
And there we have a perfectly circular opening. And if perhaps you're making wheels for a toy project, you've also got perfectly circular cutouts. There is another type of large bit that uh, drill presses handle quite easily. They also cut circles. They are not uh, as adjustable as the wing cutters. In fact, they're not adjustable at all. They are at fixed diameters. These are called hole saws. If you take a look at the uh, teeth on that, you can see why they're called hole saws. It's just like a series of saw teeth around the perimeter with a drill bit in the middle to guide. Now, with those aggressive teeth on a hole saw, here again, those teeth can grab hold of the piece and spin it around if it's not clamped down. So you want to clamp your workpiece securely in place so it doesn't come spinning back on you. Also a bit you run at slow speed. When you compare a drill press to the alternative, which is probably a handheld drill, <laughs> there really is no comparison. With a drill press, you get so much more power, you get accuracy, and you re get repeatability. It really deserves a place in your woodworking shop.